Hi guys, Katie Azevedo here from schoolhabits.com. Today I'm talking about how to make a study guide. How many times have you gone home from school and you're all set to start your study session, um, but you don't know what to study? This is where study guides come in. Um, study guides rock. If you're lucky enough, your teacher might provide you with one before a test. But if not, you can completely make your own. But even if your teacher does give you one, you might still find it helpful to make your own. Study guides are crucial to productive, effective study sessions. If you have just a small quiz to study for or a massive final AP exam, a study guide provides you with a schedule um, and a framework for studying and learning whatever material you have to get through. So think of a study guide as a plan. A plan for what to study, when to study it, for how long, how to go about it. Without a plan, without a study guide, you could waste valuable time studying the wrong stuff. Not good. So here is how to make a study guide. First, know what's on the test. Of course, your teacher will likely tell you what your test is on. I'd hope so. But if not, then ask. No harm in that. You'll either know specifics like chapter three, parts five to seven, or something more general like chapters one to three. Um, but you gotta figure out what your test is on because you know what to study, of course. So the next step is figure out how much time you have to study. You have to be careful on this one. If it's Monday and your test is on Thursday, then you have three days to study before your test, right? But do you really? Because unless you stay home from school and lock yourself in your room for three days, you don't really have 72 free hours to study. So when I say to figure out how much time you have to study, I mean to figure out how many available hours you have after school, after sports, after your other activities, after doing basic things like showering and eating, because those things take time too. So all said and done, you might come up with two hours on Monday, one hour on Tuesday, two hours on Wednesday, so whatever that is, five hours, that is way less than 72. The next step is to gather your materials. So hopefully you have a system for keeping your notes and your other materials organized. If not, then check out my other video and blog um, about keeping yourself organized and taking notes, of course, through schoolhabits.com. But assuming your notes are complete and clean, collect all the books, the handouts, and the notes that are relevant to what's on your test. Put all your other materials aside. You don't need them right now. They're just gonna clutter your mind. Be sure to bring home any textbooks you might need the day you plan to begin studying. So if you're gonna study on the weekend, make sure on Friday you're bringing this stuff home. The next step after you have your materials all set is to schedule the material into your time pocket. So when I mean the material, I mean the study material, what you're gonna be studying. So this is when you sit down with a calendar, or I guess you could just, you know, use a piece of paper, or one of my free templates on schoolhabits.com, right? And write down everything that's on your test. There could be one item, like chapter nine, or several items like parts of the brain, common psychological disorders, Sigmund Freud's psychoanalysis, whatever. Did I say phycoanalysis? Psychoanalysis, <laughs> of course. Once you know what to study, you can figure out how much time you need to study it. So for example, if you have five free hours, okay, either in one sitting or spread out over several days, and let's say you've got five hours and five topics, consider studying each topic for an hour. And write this down, write this all down. Maybe it's from two to 3 p.m. on a Monday, you're gonna study parts of the brain. Um, from three to four on Tuesday, you'll study common psychological disorders, etc. okay? If you have three topics in seven hours, this, my math is gonna be crazy here, but study each topic for two hours, okay? And spend the last hour reviewing it all. You need some time to review what you've been studying, for sure. Um, and of course, be sure to a lot more time for more complex, complex material. Um, if you're not a science person and you've got a science test, make sure you budget extra time for this. Um, however you divide the time, you write this down. You write this down in your study guide or in your calendar or whatever you're using to make your study guide. The next step, write down what materials you'll need for each topic. So once you've written down how much free time you have and what you'll need to study, the next step is to write down what materials you need for each study session. 
So write down psych textbook next to parts of the brain if that's what you're going to need to study this, you know, the parts of the brain. Write that down on your, your schedule. Um, or write notes next to Joseph Brewer or Sigmund Freud, whatever you're studying. If it's notes that you're going to need to consult for this part of your study session, if that's what you're going to need to study, then write that down in this column. If, that, if you're do, organizing your study guide with columns, and that's how I do it on my template, um, you'll see. But then you write down, you know, the topic, how much time, and then what you'll be using to study to learn the material. You'll appreciate this step once you begin studying, trust me. The next step, okay, plan time for review. If your study session is spread out over several days, plan some time on the last day to review all the material, especially the material you studied early on. If too much time passes between what you learned on a Monday and your test is on Friday, you could completely forget what you learned. That's how I worked. Um, scheduling, scheduling. <laughs> schedule this review time into your study guide and when you're writing everything down in step four. All right, next, stick to the plan, but roll with the punches. You really gotta roll with the punches and be flexible with this. So stick to your study guide as much as you can. Keeping your eye on the clock is a key way to stay accountable and stay focused. Um, knowing you only have one hour to study Sigmund Freud will ideally keep you off of um, Instagram, but at least until your session's over, right? But as much as you want to stay on schedule, you might have to make adjustments as you go. So if you completely flew through learning the parts of the brain in less than the hour that you planned on, get started on the next item. Or if studying the parts of the brain took way longer than the hour you planned, try to make up for lost time over the course of studying the next items. Balancing is an art, it is not a science. Next up, study. Of course, that had to come at some point. Once you've made your first study guide, you can use it as a template for future study guides, or you can just keep using mine. But once you get it right, you'll know it. Uh, save it in Word as a template. You can Google how to do that. Um, or draw it out by hand, make photocopies of it, keep blank study guides around. Whatever works for you, well, works for you, right? But like I said, of course, you can use one of the templates that I made for you in schoolhabits.com. I made a couple different types that you can download and print. Free, of course. Because I love school and you and all of that. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.